So again, I'm talking about a boot disk, which is where this is most commonly done. We're going to create a separate partition to put our boot files in. And you know some of these boot files, like Grub, are uh, operating system independent. They don't care what operating system is used. They're pointing to the operating systems that are loaded. So we have a special boot partition. And then the rest of the disk is given over to a logical volume manager to carve up for the rest of the operating system's needs. So in a standard Red Hat Enterprise Linux installation, we still need to create two partitions. If you're going to use a disk like a desktop system for what we call multi-booting, that you're going to install multiple operating systems and have a choice of booting to which operating system, well, that's going to require even more partitions, one for each bootable operating system. And then also, some operating system installations you may want to actually use raw partitions, especially for older, older installations, where you actually give a separate physical partition for swap space or to segregate other types of file systems for performance improvements. So there are many reasons why you might create additional partitions, but not all of them are that common. So here's how it works in an MBR. We have at the front of the disk what, what we call the master boot record, the MBR, is actually a boot block. When your system comes up and your BIOS looks for a bootable disk, it looks at the beginning of that disk for something that is bootable code that will you know, be loaded in the memory and start the boot process. So the boot block goes up at the front. What follows that is what we call the partition table, or it's also known as the label. When you go into the tool and talk about creating a new label, you're laying out an empty partition table, fundamentally. In this partition table, you can have up to four entries. So the point is you can have up to four partitions in the MBR scheme. The addresses are defined in each of these four entries in the partition table, and that points to the beginning and end of the actual partitions. And of course, I've, you know, this looks like it's a, a certain size. These can be any size, and it just you know, depends on how big this disk is. But you can have up to four main partitions. So first, if I do a LS BLK list block devices, I will notice that I appear to have, you know, my default installation is on the VDA disk, and I appear to have this second disk, which there don't, doesn't look like there's any partitions yet on it. So let's use the FDisk command since we want an MBR scheme. So we're going to partition dev VDB, and it says that it doesn't appear to already have a uh, partition table, so it's going to new, put a default DOS, which means the standard MBR, type dislabel down. That creates an empty partition table structure. So if I do a P to print, I'll notice I have no partitions. But this does tell me that I now have a standard MBR type label area, and that I'm using a sector size of 512 bytes. So let's create a new partition, n for new. It is going to be of type you know, primary as opposed to extended. Again, I can create up to four. If I create four primary partitions, there won't be, I won't be allowed to create any more. You have to leave the last one to be an extended if you want to create more than four. You have to have the extended to put the logicals in. Here I'm just creating one. So we'll default to the first partition. We do want to start at 2048, and notice the new tools here in RHEL 7 default to 2048. That's great. And as we were told in the instructions, we want this to be one gigabyte in size, so this is just going to be plus one G. It's that easy. Don't forget to write before you exit this. If you exit, you'll lose all changes, so we're doing a W to write it. That writes it to the label on disk, and we still need to tell the, the kernel about it.